I'm going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. I call this exercise random pulls because all we're going to do is pull random tiles and make decisions on those tiles as if that were our hand. And then we're going to toss them in and do it again. It's a great way to practice identifying the strength in a dealt hand. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do three random pulls. And we'll alternate between player one, the dealer, with 14 tiles, and non-dealer, where you get 13 tiles. So we'll do 14, then 13, and then 14 again. So we have a joker, a flower, a pair of wests, one dot, pair of eight dots, six, seven in bams, four, five, seven, nine in cracks with a pair of fours. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? Since we have three multiples, I would build around the most of my multiples, and f that would be eight and four. So I would probably play either evens, so I'd keep this, or I would play consecutive run. There's one hand that could be used. Four, five, six. We have a gap. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So I would hold these tiles. I don't ever pass flower if, unless I know what hand I'm playing and I'm, I have like less than three discards during the Charleston, I might pass that. But what I would probably do is break up these Wests and probably pass those three. Two, four, six, eight, or consecutive run. Look at that, we've got three jokers, a flower, north and west, and then a green dragon. Here we have two, three in dots, four, five, seven in bams, and a three crack. No multiples, but we do have these. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on, and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I think I would focus on consecutive tiles or like numbers. So I would let these go and that, maybe that. We have a flower. We could maybe do consecutive with four or five dragon. We could do two, three, four mixed suits, or we could maybe play a quint if we can build up the multiples. This would be a little bit of a risky pass. Passing two wins when there's news on the card. If someone's playing wins, you could feed into their hand. But to give myself options, I think I would do that, especially because we have jokers. The risk might be worth it, because I think with these jokers, we could build up our hand pretty quickly. We have a flower north, two, four, eight in dots with a pair of twos, four, nine in cracks, one, three, seven, nine in bams with a pair of ones and a pair of nines. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would build around the most of my multiples, in this case, odds. So I would let the north go, probably the four, 
and the eight. Then later, I would break these up, focus on odds here. We may not need this flower. We have one, three, seven, nine. If we get a five band, we could play that first hand. That's a gap, but you can use jokers for that gap tile. I would focus on odds. If you are new to American Mahjong and you have a set of tiles at home, try this exercise. Since identifying the strength in a dealt hand is the first step to picking a hand, it's a great way to improve your decision making. When you look at those tiles, identify the strength, whether it be multiples and build around those or build around the predominant pattern. Typically, the predominant pattern is going to be one of the categories on the card. Let me know how it goes in the comment section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.